Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is part three of our digital rebar introduction, where we're going to deep dive into the architecture of digital rebar, help you understand how we look at actually building an infrastructure as code platform and what the components are. This will help you navigate in digital rebar and explain some of the specific language we use and the reasons we use it. The starting point for our architecture is to understand how we break down the work that digital rebar needs to do. And that's specifically looking at when things happen, what is getting done, how we do that orchestration, and where that work gets done. All of them are important for digital rebar. And we're going to decompose the when, what, and where into deeper lessons for the next few slides. But before I do, I want to walk through this slide specifically. For the when, we're talking about the control interfaces that Digital Rebar offers, whether it's an API or protocols like Pixie Boot, DHCP, or internal events and timers, or external webhooks. Those all determine when things happen and when things get initiated or initialized in Digital Rebar. But that is not sufficient in a Digital Rebar system because it's a platform with an automated control system. The automation and the infrastructure as code that, that that is described as is absolutely critical because when you're asking when Digital Rebar to do something, you have to be giving it a what. And the what are our infrastructure as code components. These are highly modular and reusable. And we break them down into smaller components and then version them so that you know exactly what is installed in your Digital Rebar system. Blueprints, workflows are our top level constructs and those both decompose into things like stages, tasks, templates, and parameters. By modularizing those and making them immutable constructs in most digital rebar endpoints, it allows you to determine exactly what's installed and what the operations are going to be when you make requests against digital rebar. From there, the when and the what come together in two distinct paths. One is the provisioning path, where we build pipelines that do work to build infrastructure. That is where we talk about using Terraform or Pixie booting, installing an OS, reinstalling an OS, out-of-band management. Those types of operations build systems and are very important for building an end-to-end -end working uh, system. But once you've built them, you switch over into the orchestration side where we're doing ad hoc requests, what we call work orders. And you can treat the infrastructure you've built, whether it's uh, concrete infrastructure like a machine, or an appliance, or ephemeral infrastructure like a cluster or a resource broker, and send them work orders, ad hoc requests that use the same infrastructure as code building blocks, but represent a service request. Uh, do a security scan, run a Terraform plan, run an Ansible playbook, change the user identity, uh, build or chain, roll a cluster. Those types of operations are orchestrated control, and they're about operating and maintaining not building. So really we break the things down into a build and a run mode. And that's exactly what the how does. Digital Rebar tracks the system state of all the components and then pulls them together in a way that coordinates the work. That means we're building fundamentally task lists that decide what needs to get done. We have assigned parameters where we can configure what that work should look like. We do profiles so we can share that information broadly across the infrastructure and the constructs. And then we use things like machines or clusters or resource brokers as the entities that are doing the work, that actually run the queues. Fundamentally, Digital Rebar at the heart is a template rendering system, whether it's bash commands or Terraform plans or Pixie Boot instructions. Uh, everything gets turned into a series of instructions. It could be as simple as a config file, could be as complex as a generated Python script. At the end of the day, we use Golang templating to do that type of work, and that allows you a tremendous amount of control as you then influence an Ansible playbook or a Terraform plan or a bash script to do the work that you need to be to get done. And all that's well and good. One of the distinctive factors of Digital Rebar is that those workloads, those, ta those tasks and scripts are not run by Digital Rebar at the state level. They're actually managed by runners. And that's the where, and it becomes very important. In some cases, those are agents on the machines themselves, whether they're bare metal or virtual. In other cases, they're actually runners 
they're doing work inside of containers that allow you to inject specific tools into the containers to do the work. For example, Terraform or Ansible or AWS's CLI. You can build tools into a container and then include that in your workflows or work orders to actually do exactly the right systems in the right control. And we're going to dig into that quite a bit in the next couple slides. The first thing to understand is in this mix, the infrastructure is code, the what, is broken down into these different components. And we structured this so that you can see how they get built together. For the pipelining piece, we actually do the building workflows as workflows. Those get tied together into pipelines, and pipelines are represented in digital rebar as universal applications, meaning reusable chains of uh, workflows. The workflows decompose into stages, tasks, parameters, and templates, like we've described before, in an ordered way. And you can mix and match. So if you have tasks that you want to use out of our library, you can easily incorporate them into more advanced pipelines and workflows or stages. On the other side, for day two, we use uh, the language Blueprint to describe what the systems are doing. Blueprints help us build work orders in a stable way, and those get tied back into our orchestration actions. Things like triggers, trigger providers, that allow us to define orchestration behaviors in an infrastructure as code way. All of that translates back into work that needs to be done by the system. And where that work operates is really important to understand. And I realize this, this architecture drawing has a lot going on. And it's reflective in all of the different ways that digital rebar can provide useful controls and work across a very distributed architecture. The simplest is at the top left, where we have our self-runner, where we literally can bootstrap the environment and take actions on the server running digital rebar. On the immediate right at one o'clock, you can see that we have very straightforward ways to put an agent on a machine and do work for the machine, which is what we call uh, a abstracted bare metal machine, server, cloud instance, edge device, um, all of those in digital rebar speak are machines. But what we've done with machines is allow them to move the runner. And very importantly, the runner could be on the instance of the machine, but can also dynamically transition back to running on the server, on digital rebar's endpoint, what we call the endpoint, uh, and continue the same workflow back into a container, what we call a context. In, in this case, you can take out-of-band management, like a Redfish command for a physical machine, and call that as part of the generalized workflow. For a cloud instance, you might want to make an API call against Amazon or another cloud provider using its specific tooling. For VMware, there's all sorts of tools that you might want to take advantage of that can't run from the machine itself, but can only run from the context of the control plane. Uh, a switch interaction, uh, out-of-band management, a VLAN, a certificate generator. We're able to move things back and forth as part of the control flow for a machine. In some cases, we have machines that we can't put an agent on at all, and we can create a machine proxy, you see that at 3 o'clock, where we can control a machine as if it's a machine, even though we don't have a runner on it, because we can use its APIs. We do this for storage devices, where they need to be completely uh, self-contained, but have strong APIs that we can control. Switches would be something very similar. This same pattern works in any type of location. and is our way of abstracting machines and machine controls. What you'll notice is that we also have ways to treat these runners as workers or service proxies. So it's entirely possible to build a pool of runners that do nothing but interact to a service and provide you with ways to do off offload tasks, API integrations, run Terraform on your behalf, things like that. We call those uh, workers and service proxies, and they are very similar in that context to our resource brokers. There are plugins that you can extend digital rebar with in Golang. We find that um, we use those for incredibly advanced or high performance needs. Most of the needs to extend digital rebar are actually handled inside of containers and included in workflows because it's just a very scalable, easy way to extend uh, the blueprints and workflows that our customers need. And then to round out this drawing, 
uh, we have the concepts of brokers and clusters. These are abstracted machines that are virtual only. They have no physical machine backing them, but they allow us to create life cycles that do things like coordinate operations across multiple machines. That's what a cluster does. Or act as an intermediary to request resources from another service. That's what a broker would do. So for example, we can use a broker to request machines from VMware or Amazon or Google or Microsoft or from a pool of resources managed by Digital Rebar itself. Those brokers allow us to create a simple abstraction where we can make requests to get resources in an abstracted way. And then the broker interface becomes the component where a cluster can ask for or give back resources. All these things together means that Digital Rebar is able to do work in a lot of different places in parallel. So the constraints for a Digital Rebar performance system are really the amount of resources that you can put around Digital Rebar. The actual coordination of all this work, the task rendering and ordering of operations, is a relatively uh, lightweight component. It's mostly data manipulation and queuing tasks and maintaining state. And those things we scale amazingly well. We have customers running over 10,000 machines against a single endpoint. It's the ability to offload that work and do it in the machines or in externalized processes that really allow Digital Rebar to scale incredibly gracefully. And finally, it's important to understand the breadth of when you can take actions in Digital Rebar. You can always call the API to schedule operations. Inside of Digital Rebar, you can build timers, DRP, respond to DRP events, so when a machine gets built or there's an error or an alert happens, you can take uh, prescriptive actions defined as infrastructure as code, or you can have external systems calling into Digital Rebar, dropping in JSON, doing a webhook, say from a GitOps operation, mapping those to a trigger, building a blueprint, and then queuing the work against any component of the system. That allows you to uh, have an operation, say, that scans for an Ansible work against every individual machine instead of having to run an Ansible play against an Ansible runner. Um, the ability to drop work into the system is uh, very simple and easy, and it's a core part of how Digital Rebar provides orchestration. And it's important to note here that while we have traditional timers, events, and webhooks to allow you to coordinate work, back from our earlier history, you can also trigger events and bring in work through more traditional means, a DHC Pixie boot that actually allows you to run a machine discovery process. So it's important to understand that the when here is not just prescriptive, I built a trigger and defined an orchestration, but it's also responding to events in the protocol stack of running a data center. We've covered a lot of material very quickly. I hope this has been helpful to understand the how, what, when, and where Digital Rebar is doing its work, so that as you sit down and look at Digital Rebar, you'll be comfortable with our vocabulary, but also understanding how much work is done and where that work is getting done on your behalf. I really suggest that you sit down and try Digital Rebar at this point. Actually look through how clusters and resource brokers and machines interact, and how easy we've made it to build a working system with just a couple of clicks as you initiate systems at the appropriate level. You can try Digital Rebar for at portal.racken.io where it'll guide you through the process of building your own control plane and running this all on your own. I also invite you to check out our website. Uh, Racken.com has a lot of material about how we build all these pieces together and talks more about your infrastructure as code journey and how you can effectively scale infrastructure as code in your organization. Start reducing toil improving your collaboration, and managing the complexity of your infrastructure with RackN. If you have questions, please feel to reach out. We always want to help understand our customers and uh, potential users' needs better and work with you to build an amazing, productive infrastructure. Thank you.